people absolutely love exploration. Today, the industry makes use of procedural regeneration to create the unlimited discovery experience we all love. In this video, I want you to join my little time travel and look beyond the borders. Let's find out how it's made, how you can make your own game benefit from it, and how to perceive it as a modern interpretation of art. Welcome to Procedural Regeneration, a documentary for indie game devs. My name is Jesper, I am a German student and indie game dev, and it's 1978. A young boy named Don Worth, who was sitting for months just in front of his computer, coding the next game, reaches out to the publishing label Quality Software. The game is called Beneath Apple Manor, and the gameplay couldn't be easier. The goal is to obtain a golden apple on the bottom floor of the dungeon in a 10 level map. But this isn't just a normal game, as you would expect. Today we know that it wrote literally history by being the first game ever to make use of procedural regeneration. Unlike Minecraft, back then, games were just a niche and therefore Beneath Apple Manor never reached the mainstream, or even like got the credits it deserves. It took Let's go to a place where everything is made of blocks. Where the only limit is your imagination. It took 30 more years, like 30 more years, when Minecraft, you know, the open world sandbox game we all played a few years ago and still love, came out and hit the masses. But wait, something changed. And this is not just, you know, the graphics, but also like something about to the procedure regeneration itself. Let's make things clear. Procedure regeneration is not procedure regeneration. There are dozens and dozens or maybe thousands of, of different ways to create procedural words. And the techniques used back then were very different and limited in relation to today's methods. But especially its accessibility incredibly improved. And this is where we, the indie game devs, benefit from the most. So you may ask, how does procedural regeneration actually work? To deliver you this video, I reached out to Deadworth, the developer of the first game ever to make use of procedural regeneration in history, and asked him this question. Quote, I had a level generation part of the game that created a pattern of randomly placed rooms and random sizes on an internal two-dimensional array that represented the screen. Then I started in the upper left corner of the first screen, of the first room, sorry, and built a corridor in a random direction until it hit another room. Like in these cells, you know. And I did that for each room so that they were all connected to each other. Then I plot those down, which could be either a door, an open space or a secret door, randomly chosen. Then I put down chests in the center of each room and put gold in each one. That's about all that was there to do. Quote and. Like amazing if you ask me. Even though it's way more complex, of course it is, um, it's incredibly impressive what then Don World achieved, like back then, already. Even games like Minecraft are based on these noise maps and not the death of this game in himself in 2009. Um, admitted that the word generation part was by far the biggest challenge he was facing during the development. So let's take a look beyond and figure out how to do it on ourselves by taking the example of Everplant, the top-down tutorial of the game I am developing at the moment. So here we are and the first thing I'm going to do is to open the noises scene and I will explain you everything, how it works so you can understand uh, like how it's made. So basically noise map looks like this. It's just a piece of noise map, of course, it's like pseudo uh, infinite, infinitive and yeah, but this is just an extract from it. And yeah, like it looks like a noise, um, that makes sense. And to create one on your own, you just have to add a sprite. And here we have the property texture. You're clicking on this icon right here. And then you should be able to select noise like it's in German but for you it should be like new noise texture and you see it's getting black so you're clicking on it and right here you can select a noise it's like you could have a custom noise but you can also cre um, create the like the cast like the default but you can also select just but you can also just select the default open simplex noise and here it, here it is and there are many things you can like adjust and change like the seed like it's like in minecraft or like other huge games yes but this is also like 
the thing ever planned is based on and all of these um, games that make use of proceed regeneration are based on and good makes it quite easy to access these noise maps so this is quite nice to know but you may ask like how can i use these noise textures to create something like really create something out of it and to do so i have this quite long script but i'm going to summarize it for you so first of all we have a ready function where i access each of these noise maps like texture and also texture the noise and to make them have a different seat i also and i don't think this is like really necessary but uh, divided by some number and this is not the script where it gets like really generated i'm going to show you that one later on but this is the part of the script where it decides which block is where and the main thing it is doing like we are accessing this function from another script i'm going to show you after this one and it just decides what the block is where and yes so we in other plant and uh, we have an infinite amount of layers but the regeneration uh, just reaches like layer 4 and at the end we want to return a dictionary which has as a key all these layers and as a value um, the block that needs to be set on there right and it returns this value at first an interesting function for example that shows how you can make use of these noise maps is this one it's get biome and we have like this value this ocean value for example like we created this right here it is just and um, the noise map based on the seed of the uh, noise that was called ocean it's just a noise map and with the function get noise 2d v um, you can access the noise value on a specific position like the cell is a vector 2d value basically yes and if you look it up on the um, documentation you see that it's right as i just told you like you just have to give it a, a position and it returns um a noise value between minus one and one yes so um, the first thing i'm going to run here is generate layer zero generate layer zero and it just returns bedrock because the layer zero is undestroyable and always bedrock they can be in the block the next one is generate layer one and for that one this i want this to be pretty random i want this to seem to be random but it should still be based on the noise map and not random integers because i want everyone with the same seed to have the same word to see the same the same word so I'm going to get a digit and this is just the noise value on a specific position as a string and right here I'm looking like if there's 11 in digit or some like pretty random uh, numbers that seem to be random but aren't. Then generate layer 2 and it's all the same like I just showed you the function that, um, that shows us which biome we are having based on this noise value it returns block. Like it, this is all just built around this thing about this noise map you can create that easy as I just showed you and you just have to give it a position effectively and it returns a value and based on this value you can create something. Now I'm going to show you the part where it actually gets put into the world and it's not as complex as it seems. Here are the tie maps and the tie sets gets generated on, on the start. So the interesting part for us now is the map generator and it basically loads in chunks. This basically just means that it checks loads four blocks to the left of the player and four blocks to the right of the player and like the block the player is standing on. So it are nine by nine block chunks and for each chunk we are loading a cell and in the load cell function and this is the interesting part. In the load cell function we are loading a terrain um, value and this value gets decided based on the get cell function from the script planet orbis this is just the name of the planet and this is what i just showed you it's exactly this function that just returns a dictionary a keys as the layers and the values as the blocks that are stored in that layer 
And so it's iterating through each layer for layer internal because these are the keys. And then it's adding the cell. I, this is a, like a custom function that you can write what you want, but, so, but it's adding the cell um, to the world. And yes, and it's, it's basically saving this. And if this is a block that has already been customized or like destroyed or something else, um, it corrects this because like an Everplant, um, no blocks get stored until you uh, change it. Yeah, so this is basically it. You have these noises, you make these noises, and then you can access with a given position a noise value. And based on that value, you generate a structure. And if you want to have chunks, you can make this in chunks, not in chunks, whatever you want. But the principle behind it always stays the same. And for doing so, for example, in Everplant, we're getting this wonderful result. So I hope this helped you and I hope you also understood like the, this huge potential behind this very easy and, and accessible feature in, in Godot. If you want me to do a whole tutorial series out of this, feel free to contact me or on Twitter or like in the comments wherever and whenever you want. What else can we do with these noise maps? It's not just words, but much, much more. I don't know if you have yet heard about it, but the game No Man's Sky is the best game by far to give you an insight to the world of advanced procedural generation. You know, the game where your goal is to discover an entire universe, meet procedure generated animals, plants, roads, chips, and so much more. It's all procedurally generated. Saiyan from IGN took a closer look at this, especially to the generation of animals, and will now explain to you how it works. Like, I can walk in any direction for days and days and weeks and weeks if I want and I'll walk all the way around the planet eventually and come right back around to where I started. Everything that you see around you is generated. So the terrain, the water, the trees, the foliage and the life on the planet, the creatures, they're generated and they're generated by maths. The input to the maths is where you're stood um, and the output is everything that's on screen. So if two people go to the same planet, they'll see exactly the same thing. If I go to a planet, I will always see the same thing. But it's generated there and then, it's put on the graphics card, it's rendered to the screen. And if I fly away, then it's all just thrown away. But if I come back again, it will be generated again exactly the same way because, because of maths, and maths always works out the same. So all we have to do as programmers is just create the algorithms that create the things that you see, the terrain, everything else, the creatures. A fish is created as like almost like a silhouette by our artists, and then the code basically mutates and changes that. Our artists create a fish, and then they can create, the, the code the program creates every variant of fish that you can imagine. So if I click this button, which allows me to view variants, then you'll see that you get just an array of fish, and I can select any of those, and I can view variants of them, and I can just do that hundreds of times and I will see hundreds of different variants. That's kind of how we generate creatures. And it's not just creatures, it's buildings, it's all the life that you see around you. So fish and birds, but also ships and even your weapon. The terrain is kind of procedurally generated too. The terrain is being generated around me and it, it generates around you in higher and higher detail. Normally that would be created by an artist. For us, it's just created by maths. I just give you an example. I can just quickly click generate and get like a new terrain, basically. And we'll get new features, new mountains, new rock formations, that kind of thing. This is all within the same planet, so it doesn't change the creatures and stuff right now, but it gives you a sense of how powerful this is. And like underwater, you're getting these kind of crazy ravines and everything just works. You know, fish will just inhabit these. Ships will just land at buildings that automatically get placed. AI will just work around it. And that's because everything is kind of working off these same algorithms. But what's cool is that this simulation is kind of happening not just at a kind of micro level like this, where you have life and creatures, but it's also happening at a kind of a, a larger scale. So if I start to zoom out, you can see that even though there are like shoals of fish down here, there's a whole planet out there just kind of working away. And this is happening at that, that kind of planetary level, but it's also happening at a more like solar system level and a more galactic level. So I can just pull out of this quite quickly. 
and you can see moons of that planet, uh, which will be orbiting around. Other planets kind of hanging around in the distance, and those stars out in the sky are actually like real places. It's not just a drawing of some stars. Those are kind of light of distant suns that will have their own solar systems just like this. So this is quite interesting though, but just to be honest, it's scratching the surface. So I decided to connect to the Happy Cat on YouTube, and this is how she explains the tech behind No Man's Sky's generation of basically everything. It's safe to say there are no truly self-identical structures in nature because there are always irregularities. But we can use these general patterns and irregularities in fractals to simulate natural forms and games, like varied tree branches and mountainous terrain, or use them to generate noise for cloud textures. One way we can do this is by examining the formulas that describe fractals. These are usually described recursively, meaning, for example, let's say one broccoli sprout is the base case, we can find a recursive rule, an equation, or set of instructions that generates a broccoli stalk from those individual sprouts. The Mandelbrot set is probably one of the most famous fractals with the equation z equals z squared plus c, where z is a complex number and c is a constant representing the origin or wherever you want to center it. In any case, that's one simple example. They can get pretty crazy, but no matter what, the fractals formula will always generate the same image. In game terms, this means we could create and maintain a planet or at least a big chunk of its information without having to take up a ton of memory. So what else can we learn out of this? The procedure regeneration is so much more than just code and can be used for almost anything. Not just roads, but also animals, plants and everything. Yeah. And yeah, you can say it, it's modern art. With this video, I try to deliver a video that looks beyond the border and gives you some interesting insight in how to make use of this tech, especially for the game devs. I hope that this gave you some real benefits out of this. If you think so, consider leaving a sub or a like. This would like really help me out. And secondly, my game Everplant, an infinite top-down open world terraria like game, is now wishlistable for you on Steam. Feel free to join our supportive and welcoming community on Discord and check me out on Twitter. See you next time and have a nice day.